So welcome everybody. Welcome to a song podcast. And today is May the 16th, 2024. Time flies when you're having fun. May is already halfway through. Anyways, the topic for this evening is useful fiction. It kind of um is so today is, is kind of part one for useful fiction and next week would be um, part two of useful fiction. And then on the 30th, um, I will be taking a break because I'll be going on retreat. So, so just to let you guys know, <clears throat> be at the timetable. So why why did I choose this useful fiction? It's because um, actually what I wanted to talk about is how to how to hypnotize yourself, how to um, put yourself in an altered state. Why? Because when you can put yourself like when you can choose the state of mind that you're in, then you're in charge of um, really you're in charge of your own state. You're not just subject to you know what's happening around you and what, what um, like no matter what is happening outside of you, you can always choose how you feel and how you can. So you so then it makes you um, independent of your environment. Um, you're not susceptible to what's outside of you you can build up that internal strength so that you you're no longer the receiver of all the the, the signals that are outside of you you actually can maintain yourself and when you can maintain that state within yourself then that's mastery it means you are no longer at the whim of what's outside of you and and then um, so it kind of it's it's self mastery is really what I want to talk about um, and really get for for all of you to get to the point. Of course, this is what I want for you. That doesn't mean this is what you want for yourself. So it's um, you have to choose that for yourself as well. If you think that it's more fun to um, be part of the group, then absolutely, then, um, then just allow yourself to be persuaded by what's outside of you, <clears throat> okay? So useful fiction is the, why useful fiction? Because from my point of view, we are eternal essence. We are limitless. So that's who we truly are. Beyond this body, beyond the personality, beyond whatever life or stories that you have lived through so far, you actually are at heart, in your spirit, in your soul. You are eternal essence. And so actually, from that point of view, everything else is simply fiction. The person that... Um, that is called Winnie, it's a fiction. It's a fiction that I created and that I actually spent you know, so many years of my life to, to build up this, this fiction character. And the same is true for every one of you as well. It is just that most of the time, we are not the, the one that is in charge of creating that fiction. A lot of the times we, gave that power over to our parents, to our environment, to um, other people's opinion, to society, what society wants from us. We are, um, so this, the, the fiction is actually, um, it's not, it's not who we truly are. And it is time, it is really time for us to start to wake up to that and start to take charge of creating that fiction for ourselves. 
And at first, it may feel like, you know, you're just making it up. So you would feel like, oh, this, this, I am this Winnie and this is true for me. And, and everything else that I can think of or can imagine seems like it's, it's fake. But the, the truth is everything is fake. Everything is fake. The fact that I was born a certain time of day, the fact that, you know, those are my parents, I have siblings, and now I have children of my own, and I, like, everything is, is fake. From spirit's point of view, everything is fiction. So then it's not a matter of, you know, truth. Like, it's not a matter of, um, we want things that are true. And um, if you want truth, then I've said it before, and I will say it again, is that there is no truth outside of your truth. Whatever you accept as truth will be your truth. Why? Because all of the environment that you can see hear, feel, and touch. It's all fiction. And um, from the point of view of spirit, that is. From the point of view of, you know, um, a character that has this body, the body that I seem to be able to touch, that you guys seem to be able to see, then it is, it, it feels real, but it's not. And um, some of you may be able to grasp that and some of you will not even be able to accept that at, at all. You would think that I'm crazy and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay, I'm, I'm perfectly okay for you to think that I am crazy. However, it is, my choice to to represent that to because I I really want for those of you that are ready to see that you know this this world that we think is real it's not everything is fiction now the the topic for this you know why are we here living this fictitious life and why it's so why are we here as an um, eternal essence trying to live this fictitious life um we want to learn we want to experience this as eternal spirits there are some things that we cannot quite grasp unless we actually experience it, then we can grasp it at a level that is deeper than we can when we when we only have it in our mind. So um, that's why. And useful fiction. So let's get back to why useful fiction. There are some, some things we belief in is useful. Some things are not quite so useful. Useful useful from the point of view of being able to learn something because we're here to experience, we're here to learn, we're here to play. Because playing is really the best way to learn. And um, so I want to talk about a few things first about you know, fiction. Um, I have the good fortune to be able to get to know um, at a really personal level um, with a few absolutely amazing human beings, let's say. One of them, the first one that I want to talk about, um, I don't know whether I've ever mentioned him, it's it's been a while since I've mentioned him, but um, one of the the most miraculous person 
that I've met in, in my short life so far is Dr. Wang. Dr. Wang is a Qigong master. Before oh. Sif James, it was, um, it was, oh, somebody trying to, to say something? I'm on Zoom. Okay. I'm on Zoom. So Dr. Dr. Wang, Dr. Wang, um, so why did I, why do I want to use him as one of the, the example of useful fiction is that he truly had a miraculous life. It's like when um, it feels like it, it's a fairy tale, but it is true because he lived it. So, so let me let me just um, tell you about Dr. Wang. So, this is according to what Dr. Wang told me, is that before he was born, he um, his mother had a dream one night, and in within the dream, the, the, the he she was told. So, Dr. Wang's mother was told that now your son, your third child, is the son. He is going to be a, um, he's going to be an extraordinary person. And the only way that he could be this extraordinary person is if you let him go. Um, and you have to let him, a monk will come and ask for your third child, the son, when he turned, I forgot how many years, three or four years old, and you have to let him go. Otherwise, he will not be able to fulfill his destiny. So that was the dream. And so his mother, you know, so, uh, very ordinary women, not very not particularly educated, but she remembered that dream because it was so vivid for her. And lo and behold, her third child um, is this is this um, is a son, and so you know at the same at the the age that you know the the dream told her, a monk actually did come by her house and ask to you know to to take the the boy away, and because her mother was so touched by that dream and it was the dream was so vivid. And of course, because also because she had other kids. I think there were maybe about at least five or six children. And so her mother decided to, you know, well, you know what? That is um, God's will or whatever it is that she believed in. So she allowed the monk to take the, the her, her child. And what happened was the the monk actually trained um, Dr. Wang in um, Kung Fu, in how to, you know, um, uh, acupuncture, how to heal, how to open her his um, third eye and be able to, you know, do all these miraculous things. And so, um, so this is part of the reason why I want to share the story because it's his life felt like fiction to because you, know, you know how many people you know have their mother you know had a dream about you know, their child something like that it's it's like you know if it if he had not lived that life you know nobody would believe it because it was just so incredible. Um, and it's not something that um, any ordinary person, most people does not have that kind of life, but he had that kind of life. So he was, um, then when I met him, he was in his late 50s, almost 60, I think. So, in, and he was um, really, miraculous person he can just talk to you on the phone and be able to diagnose you know know what's going on 
um, in your energy field. So absolutely amazing. He could um, actually pretty much in everything that you, you've heard that, you know, um, if Jesus could do, he could do. He's not Jesus, but yeah, this is just to give you a um, a bearing on, you know, the kind of miraculous person that he is. And so this is, and it all came about because his mother listened to a dream that she had before he was born. And so this is for her at the time, it was pure fiction, but she allowed it. She, um, for whatever reason, she allowed that. And she played along with that, with that fiction. And because she played along, so everything else kind of follows suit afterwards. So that is one fiction that I find is very useful fiction. You know, how many, how many people have dreams like that? And we actually believe in that dream and follow suit and just, you know, do whatever it is that the dream told us to do. Um, that's definitely a useful fiction. And another one another story that I would like to share with you all is um, this Richard Bartlett. So Richard Bartlett is another really, <laughs> I would say, um, extraordinary person. He, he's um, that, that I have the, the good fortune to have met in person and also learned from him the last couple of years and really got to, to know him. And if, um, so it does not take very long for anyone to recognize that you know, Dr. Richard Butler is an extraordinary person. So he, he is, he's not a cookie cutter person. He is, one in a trillion, <laughs> let's put it that way. So a lot of people you meet is like, oh, okay. So you know that they are, for whatever reason, you know what to expect of them. But with um, Dr. Richard Bartlett, you don't know what to expect from him. And he chose to be that way. Because as spirit, that's who we are. We are one in a trillion. The more you can fit in with society, um, the less you are in tune with who you truly are. And um, so why do I want to share the point? Richard Bartlett's some um, story is because he really is the like the one who taught me how to move away from the, the program that, that we have been subjected to and I remember the first time I learned about these these things it was um it was I was attending one of his it's called Wizard Class. And he was sharing how, you know, you can uh, borrow these extraordinary abilities from other people like Merlin, like Superman, like the, the people that you, that these extraordinary powers that you can borrow from does not need to be who, does not even need to be um, something does not need to be true, but it needs to be, how should, it, it has to have a, an energy field, meaning like Superman has an energy field because Superman is a fictitious um, character that has been with humanity for how long? At least 50, 60 years. It was a cartoon figure, 
um, Once Upon a Time was a cartoon figure that really took root and, and people started to, um, you know, wanting that, want to, to, to know more about that fictitious color, that, that fictitious um, character. And now there's been, I don't know how many movies about Superman and there's so many different versions of Superman movie, Superman, um, you know, like shows all of those. So Superman is has already created an uh, amorphic field. So when you say Superman, people would know that oh, Superman has you know laser vision. He can see through um, buildings and he can fly. He can you know do all sorts of things. So that's what I mean by um, that you, we don't really have to, like things does not, a thing does not have to be real and true for it to have power. It's because so many people um, know about Superman and they have invested their time and their energy in um immersing in this fictitious character that it is because many people have done that. Um, so it, they have created this morphic field so that when you call in Superman, there is actually energy field that's already there that you can tap into. So that's what I learned from, from Richard Bartlett is that you can draw power from that. You can actually, when you take on a, a fictitious character, then you actually take on their ability as well. And the more you immerse yourself in that um, mythology of that fictitious color, the more you would be able to um, be able to take on their characteristics. Um, and he, he actually demonstrated that by, he actually have a Superman, like this talking about Richard Bartlett, he, he actually um, have a Superman suit, you know, not, not the um, Halloween costume party kind, but, you know, really well-made costume of Superman that he, he was able to, to, to be able to um, come by and he actually had taken pictures of that. And, and so he really taken time to immerse himself and take on that character. Not because, well, yes, also because he's a, he's, he is a um, child at heart, but also because he knows the the power of acting, the power of um, acting as if. And, and from what the, the results that he gets from that, um, yeah, I truly believe that that is very possible. And it does not, it, it, that means that we don't actually have to That actually means that if we want to, we can actually create a fictitious personality or a fictitious um, quality for ourselves and be able to act as if that fictitious character. Why? Because we, each and every one of us, are a fictitious character already it is just that we feel that okay this character is real because this is Winnie I've lived life a certain way as Winnie or what I um you know accept as being Winnie and the only thing that's stopping me from being superwoman is that you know I don't invest much time at all in being superwoman. Oh, it's called Wonder Woman, sorry. 
I, you know, I could be one Wonder Woman if I've actually invested my own time to embody that character. So this is really one of the ways um, that I want to start introducing to you all is that if you take yourself too seriously, if, if you take the life that you have lived, the all the things that other people have told you that is true um, too seriously, then you're stuck. That means that, you know, whatever it is that you accept as real, then that's how, that's what you use to create your own reality. However, you always have that option to create something for yourself that is completely fictitious at first and the more you can embody that fictitious scenario the more you would be able to um make that fictitious scenario become true for you so the and the other thing i want to talk about is that you know how do we create how did i create winnie how did I create Winnie? It, like, this is actually a very good question to ask yourself. How do you know you are who you are? How did you create that? Because you absolutely true that we created ourselves. We created this persona. So when you can um, kind of reverse engineer that, when you when you become more observant at how do you reverse engineer how you created yourself, then you can actually uncreate any part of yourself that you know, um, that you're not that you are ready to let go of. And also you can start to create yourself to be, the person that you want to be. And so this is what I want to talk about is you know, useful fiction is you know, how the, the process of uncreating yourself and then also recreating, taking charge, taking a hundred percent charge of recreating yourself again. So um this is kind of the first part of what I want to talk about. Questions, comments? Okay, so I'm born in a certain society that parents and all that, they're the one who really put that mold into Nishi. And I grew out of that because every time I have up and down in a life, so that made my choices different than what whatever I once I thought. So because we were mold, I, I was mold with I mold myself with the time and with the situation what I was in. So if I wanted to be a Wonder Woman and uh, somebody else, it, I did not know that time. I knew that, okay, let's pass by today. So what I can do today to do this, 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 and meet my, and meet in everything. Doesn't matter, like financially, physically, whatever, mentally. Uh, but where are we then? That means we created, I created myself what I am today. It's, it's created because my past karma put me in that family. Then from there, over and over, doing a lot of things until today, whatever I did, it was due to the circumstances. And sometimes when you look at the other side, then say, oh, we have to go through this to learn the lessons. We, we meant to learn the lesson. I don't know what kind of lesson I learned. So where where do we stand with this? We can create our own 
mold and live the life the way we want it. Yes, one day somebody can be enlightened. They can think about it totally different. But from the starting till whatever the age they are becoming enlightened or more aware, that life, we even don't know if we have created. I don't even know that I created this. To me, I created because I was put into this earth, walk, and I survived whatever, which way I supposed to. And I did a good job so far. I'm happy with it. Yes, a lot of struggle. But when I created myself, I even don't know what the hell I want. So how do I find out my true, true self? Like what I should be a Wonder Woman or should be a housemaker or baker or whatever it is. How do I know? Because that that part of me is kind of lost because gone through all this uh, uh, roller coasters and today is my mental ability. I see I'm a very practical, okay, this is what I have, this is what I'm going to do, and that's a, that's what it is. How do I go opposite totally, like flip? And where I will get okay, all that encouragement or or the, the how I'm going to gamble to be that part who I really, if I ever find out which one I want to be, so how I'm going to get that? How I'm going to jump to that, that side? Where is that miracle wand? I can just say, is abracadabra, and this is what me, <laughs> you know? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. I, I absolutely hear you, and I absolutely um, understand where you come from. Thank you. So, you... The first step is notice what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. So the stories that you tell yourself. Okay. Is, you know, at first, you know, don't try to, there's nothing wrong with the life that we, we have lived. Nothing's wrong with that. It's absolutely perfect the way it is. We created ourselves, we, you know, we created this life and there's nothing wrong with this life at all. Okay? Mm -hmm. First thing is to really understand that. And then the second thing is to, um, so this is, this is the winning life or that is the Jane's life or, you know, whomever it is, the life that they have created for themselves, absolutely perfect. Also understand that that's not you. So first thing is to remember that you are this and so much more. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Very important. And um, so make that a mantra that you say to yourself. First thing in the morning, at least, at least, you know, two, three times a day, at least. So first thing in the morning, absolutely. When mm -hmm. you wake up, first thing is remind yourself that you are limitless. You are eternal essence experiencing this reality through a body. Okay. So really understand that, okay, this this is just a playground. This is just a playground and you are actually eternal essence and the life that you have created so far, nothing wrong with that. It's an experience that, you know, um, a lot of the experience, a lot of the times within this lifetime, you have allowed someone else to create the experience for you. We all did that. And we are still here. So no, no, no foul, no harm. We are still alive. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> and now we get to the, the best part is now that we remember and we have reminded ourselves and we truly have integrated that belief in ourselves that we are eternal essence that, you know, yes, we have this body, but we are way more than this body. We are powerful and limitless because this life had um, has a very um, interesting and visceral way of making you accept limits. Mm -hmm. But in actuality, we are limitless. So, you know, first is really integrate in your own being that your eternal essence, absolutely limitless. The own, the, like, the limits that you face at this moment is only temporary. And given enough time and, and the right um, guidance, you can transcend any limits. Mm hmm Absolutely, any limit. And the second thing you try to do is, once you have integrated that your eternal asset, that you can do everything else, this, then um, a lot of it is really letting go of the limits that you have taken on. For example, you mentioned, you know, you always say, I'm very practical. Like you mm -hmm. always say that you're practical. Okay. Right. The flip side of being practical is meaning that you have been programmed well. I, I agree with that. You have been programmed well and you know how to survive it within the limits. Okay. Right. So, so then start to go within because when you look outside everything outside is reflecting your the your beliefs in the past mm -hmm. what you see outside of you All is right. what you have believed in the past so what you have believed in the past created this your present mm -hmm. Okay, and also you, we always say that, oh, okay, yeah, there's karma. There really is no karma. Mm -hmm. There's no karma. Why we think that we have karma is because um, <clears throat> this playground mm -hmm. is where we learn. Um, consequences so things so, so this is the playground where we learn limits and within that limits we create we learn how to be a creator within this limit so that is this is the playground that we actually learn how to create so we however we forgot that you know, we are learning to be creator. We actually learn to be survivor. That's true. We learn to be survivor, which is fine. It's it's fine. We learn to be survive. We learn to be survivor. And um, once you have survived, once you learned how to survive, then the next thing is to remember that you are limitless. And that within you, within each one of us, we can create whatever it is that we need. So we, the limits that we learned is um, group. Okay, when we are in a group, we 
and create me when we're in the group um it's not easy to do things just from within it's not easy to follow your heart because then we always have to um, think about oh what would others say people say and what would you know my my siblings what would my kids all the other things what would they say if they like it they'll say i did good if they don't like it they say oh she, my mother gone crazy so <laughs> that's, that's about it <laughs> That's because we need something from the outside. We need their approval. Mm -hmm. And we have learned, like in survival mode, we have learned that when we have approval, then we will survive. Mm -hmm. That's limitless being. Um, we have we, we need to walk a line, walk a line that we don't want to piss off other people. <laughs> we don't want to let, let me put it this way: we don't want to deliberately do things to um, piss people off just because, yeah. But we also don't want to do things just so that we can fit in. There, like between the two, there is a fine line that says that we want to follow what our heart truly desires. Mm -hmm. And when you really do that, you know, you do things because this is really what my heart wants to do rather than, okay, this is what my neighbor, my, um, you know, my, my sister or my son wants me to do or my father wants me to do, or this is how I will be able to survive because this is practical. You know, mm -hmm. you have to start to, you know, create that partnering with yourself, with the higher part of yourself, because there's a part of you that is limitless and would be able to arrange anything that you want like okay. assist you in creating whatever it is that you want however you have to create that partnership meaning mm -hmm. you have to use, let's say you want to create a million dollars you have to say okay create that partnership with your your the limitless part of you to say, okay, I want this. I want to have this much money because um, money is not a very good um, thing to go after. For example, you want to, let's say, I want to feel a certain way in my life. And in order to feel that way, I want to live in, let's say, a house that is uh, one acre and uh, allow me to be able to, um, you know, have a um, garden, be able to plant all my own vegetables and, um, you know, blah, 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 all the things. So accept that, okay, this is what I want. And then do your part start to look for that house, start to talk to people, to learn how to plant, and the money will start to find its way to you, or you will find other ways for you to have that experience. Do you understand that? I understand that. It's, uh, 
Yes, because I'm just wondering, like looking at the life, how we raise a child or how my parents raised me, though they provided me everything, whatever they could, and I had a good childhood and everything, but in a spiritual way or the, as a life, when I really look at it, like, when you really deep down, I look at it, I even don't know what I really, really want because I think the, the mask over mask over and like we are into way of life, the living. So I have forgotten what I, I think what I'm doing, that's what I'm doing and that's what I'm supposed to be doing. Okay, then make that choice. You mm -hmm. want to find, you want to get to know yourself. Mm -hmm. Make that, make that choice and follow through. Okay, so how do you follow through? I don't know. Oh, I'm, really... I'm doing it, going, coming to the meditation and learning from you or Shifu or Jenna and all that. I, I I made my choices. It's been quite a few years. I had made it a little more progress than what I knew like five years down the road. If you want to taste in that, then announce it to the universe as well. Mm-hmm. And um, find a way for you to know that. For example, um, there's some, I know some people, what they've done is they draw a card, a tarot card. Mm -hmm. Like every morning for guidance, for example. And then um, if tarot cards does not resonate with you a book it could be like any I have those book. cards I do draw the, the angels card or divine card I do that then I read the, the message what is the message for today and then I oh okay sometime I remember sometime I don't remember but I do make the time to draw those cards okay and and the other thing is um like you know how to do the the soul energy so then right clean, clean your soul let go of sure the energy that is kind of holding you down mm -hmm. it's when you feel lighter it um the the real person that like the, the the soul energy will start to come through more mm -hmm. so make a make a habit of you know doing the um, clearing past karma or past energy once a day the baggage okay Perfect. Thank or, you. Or, you know, clearing that, you know, um, at least, you know, a few times a week. Because mm -hmm. um, you do feel that it is, you do feel lighter when that happens. Yes, I have experienced that. Like even in Shifu's uh, meditation, I did feel that. Yeah. Do more of that then. And then okay. don't do more of that. So then um, you kind of signal to your the, the higher part of you to know that, okay, yeah, she's ready. And if you want to hasten it, so, um, you know, announce that as well. Thank you. The story you said about Dr. Bang, it's kind of similar to one we have in India. 
uh, I don't know if you heard the Shirdi Sai Baba. He's just a simple person who sits with the one leg across his knee. And he was, uh, his parents, I don't know if it's now true or not, it was in the 1840s. So he, his parents uh, never had a child. And so the mother was always praying, praying that she wants a child. And then finally, uh, the voice came to her that uh, she can, she will be granted a wish, but at a certain age, uh, I think it was 12 or 14, uh, somebody will come. No, or maybe he was younger. Uh, at certain age, he will be, uh, somebody will come and you will have to give him up. And if you agree to that, then we'll be okay. So the parents said, okay, we'll agree. And so they raised the child for a few years and definitely on that day, there was a knock on the door and a simple man came and said, I'm here to take your son. And she cried and all, but she knew that she, that was the promise, so she gave him up. Mm -hmm. And that man <clears throat> taught him uh, different things about same like what we are doing now, you know, all the self healing, the doing kindness to others, spreading good things and all that. But he always lived a very simple life. He, he would never, of his own, go and do anything. He'd just sit under a tree, and one day he sees a guy uh, looking, looking, looking for something. So finally he catches his attention and says, what are you looking for? He says, I'm looking for my horse. He says, there he is. He just points it to him and the horse is right there. And the guy says, oh, how did you know? And he says that. So then there was some, he used to live in a simple hut or something. And uh, slowly, slowly, like little things like that happened. He came out and people started following him. So it's not very unique, I think. In many many cults, many, many cultures, it is possible for such people to be born. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I, I know in in the Bible there is um, Samuel. Yeah, so there are there are um, different stories, and I'm quite sure if it's in the Bible, then yeah, it happens in in other cultures as well. Yeah. So. And nobody even knows his real birth name or anything. It's only as he grew. <clears throat> and uh, he would, uh, he learned how to speak. And even the story about how he left his mentor, uh, he was, uh, he left him and then some years later he found that uh, he passed away. So he had some bricks and he put it on that uh, place where he knew it was a marker for him like to remember his mentor. Okay. Mm -hmm. Lots of stories here. Mm -hmm. There's a whole TV, TV program going on. on, on yep. Indian TV. Yeah. So, okay. Thank so you. So now when you are saying to that all our life is fictitious, but it's the fiction that we have created. That's what you're trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that um, if you can create this life, you can create any other life. Any other life, okay. Because you create this life. Yeah, in a way. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, the, the thing is we, we create this life, but a lot of the times, I know for myself it's true, a lot of the times I did not consciously choose the life like I gave the power away to other people to choose the life for me right so now that you know our consciousness has grown to the point where we know that we have created a life so that means that we can actually create life as we actually want it Consciously, 100% of the time, be able to create that, the life that we actually want. But does it matter if it uh, gels with other lives, other people's lives around you? That is for you to decide. 
because that's that's what uh, makes it difficult for the choice yeah yeah like if you're alone it's easier but if you have a family or something then you're always considering everybody else around you <laughs> very true yeah. yeah that is part of the that is part of the choice so how do you want to experience that life because if you it is your choice to create the life you want so if the life you want um, the only thing that is stopping you is that you think you need something else outside of you Yeah, I realized that uh, recently that it's what is inside of us is more important than what is outside. What is in like if you if you have the uh, the fear that oh okay, okay let me let's try this. Okay, please mute yourself if you are creating noise. Okay, um, so if you want to create something but you are afraid that you know, what if other people do not um, accept me if you have that thought then you're going to create that scenario for yourself if you truly resonate with okay this is the life that I want and there is no other thoughts then the people around you will accept the life that you have created for yourself. Oh, yeah. But isn't and, this uh, all these changes that are happening where we are expecting the governments to fall, the banks to fail, everything? Isn't that also part of uh, our collective creation? <laughs> So we are. So we have, have been trained to um, be afraid of the government falling. No, I'm not afraid. I'm just saying, isn't that change also a part of our collective creation? Yep, it is. Right. But so, um, but but we're talking about individual creation. Yeah, your own creation, because. There is a group of people outside of you that, that they want to play that game. They want to play the game to be able to create, to um, create that power dynamics. So they play in that. So that's their creation. Hmm. And when you create your own experience even if they you know have other plans you can when you um when you really tap in to and follow your own direction you'll be able to find a way to have your experience without being interfered that's right that's right Like during COVID, we all chose not to take the vaccine, right? It was our individual choice. Yep, individual choice. I very much understand so. why people fear things, you know. As soon as you say something, they say, is it good for me? Is it bad for you? You have to ask yourself that question, right? It comes from within you. That's, but that's okay. Yeah. They, you know, you can't, there's some people who um, are still playing in that game. And that's their choice. Not good, not bad. They just want to play that game. It's fine. You cannot create for someone else, but you can totally be in charge of creating your own experience. 
yesterday Cornelius was saying something uh, is they're pregnant again so he was saying that how is my wife creating a placenta within her body to bear the child so he's saying why can't we grow limbs why can't we grow other parts of the body we can and, sorry we can we can, we can. We can. yep yeah, and then the only uh, thing that's him. stopping us is is the belief that we cannot. Right, right. I guess we can. Uh, then he mentioned a animal called alpha tall, alpha tall, and it's like a lizard. So lizards bring get new tails. <laughs> and so this animal can create. Lots of parts in its own self. Yeah. They regrow their limbs. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. But it's uh, becoming almost extinct, so it lives under the water. Yeah. The only reason why we human beings don't do that is because <laughs> <laughs> we accepted the fact that we cannot. So you you always create um, from your belief. Mm. Like I want to believe that I can do away without supplements, that I can be healing myself. That's very hard. <laughs> it doesn't work very fast. You can? No, uh, like for instance, uh, Monday, Tuesday, uh, I went to the store, I brought some plants and uh, I took off my jacket and uh, everything except my hat and uh, short sleeves. And I was working and everything and there was a little bit of wind. And I kept saying, okay, I'm good, I'm good. Uh, and then I come back inside and next day I start sniffling and little, little things keep bothering. And I keep saying, no, it's not going to connect. But then eventually your pattern kicks in and says, yeah, the, the wind and all affected your system. Yep. So you have to, like, um so you can create but you cannot um but you have to take care of all the um contrary beliefs first mm. you can't just say okay i want to i you know i want to create this but are you actually aligned to create this like if you want to create something, but there are parts of you that, you know, believe that, oh, I can't, I'm not strong enough, then you're not going to be able to create that reality for yourself. So how do so, you do that? So, so then you, so then when you work with your own, you work with your own beliefs. Okay, so then you say, okay, good. So this time I know that, you know, when this happens, then um, I would get symptoms. Then you'd say, okay, so next time um, you set it up so that you, you know, you give yourself the more support so that you don't get symptoms. Right. Maybe you need to. Maybe you stimulative. need to work on your. Maybe you need to strengthen your immune system first before you. Because your body, um, 
has been conditioned a certain way. So it, it may not be able to, you know, flip. It's not like it can flip a switch. Right. Okay. Thank you. To work with your body and say, okay, so maybe I need to, you know, take uh, probiotics or I you need to, you know, drink a certain amount of water, you know, those, th all of those <laughs> things first. Yeah, I do all of that. <laughs> I take so many supplements that you know, drink a lot of them. Uh, okay. I think it's just the mindset, the ego jumping. It's, it's not just the mindset. Yes, the mindset is very important. However, it is actually... Um, doing enough so that it's not just mindset it's other things as well so that you are completely aligned it's about alignment it's not about mm -hmm. so if you're completely aligned what would you do just be healthy and <laughs> Good. And what do you need to do in order to be healthy? Then you have to ask the next question. So it could be that you need to, you know, um, do more exercise or be out in the sun more. So mm. that that was my mind. <laughs> yeah, to be out more in nature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Thank you. Any other comments, questions before I uh, go on to the next thing? Not really. Okay. So the next thing is, so I mentioned that this is a two part. So I actually want to, um, so just recap is everything is fiction. So if you can create this fiction of your experience now, then you can actually create any experience that you wish to have. And so part one I want to actually talk about, so um, is how to release, how to let go. And so that's why I want to so you all the um okay useful fiction uh -huh. so um pay attention to your internal story so we'll talk more about how to create a new story um next time but this time I want to focus on actually um, cleaning up old stories, okay? So karmic release is one of the ways that we can let go of negative energies from previous lifetimes. And um, so for those of you who did attend Tuesday night, Sifu James, he went through something similar to this. Maybe not uh, broken down in as many steps. However, this is um, what I came up with that hopefully we work for, with, with give all of you a more step-by-step -step approach of how to do this for yourself when you are by yourself. So I just want to explain the steps and then we will do a you know um, meditation on how to go through this. So first thing is really, um, so 33966693. So these numbers actually is the number for the two major meridians within our body. So by activating these two, you're actually activating 
um, how your own body can um, start to run energy better. Because when you run energy better, then it's easier for you to um, raise your own vibration to do the rest. Because when you release things, it helps if you raise your own uh, vibration. So 33966693, activate. And so just do this and start to focus on your breathing. And maybe this will take you know, a couple of minutes before you actually start to feel your own energy running properly. Okay. Then I, I've added in this breathe in pure love. So, yes, the energy running, but when we breathe in pure love, we actually choose the frequency of the energy that we are breathing in. So I want, actually want to put in, breathe in pure love as well, so that we can all um, be more selective of the frequency that we are picking in. And then 39 inch activate is because we are doing energy work. So 39 inch kind of gives you a prote protection because um, I don't know about you guys, but I live in, <laughs> I kind of lived in a um, like downtown Toronto. So the energy around me is um, a little chaotic. So I would like some protection when I am raising my own frequency, because once you raise your own frequency, you become um, noticeable from all the other background energies. So then you may attract um, entities to you if you don't have protection. So this is what I put in is 39 inch activate for now. Okay, until I work on letting go of the, the idea that, you know, entities are not good for me. And then next is connect with guardians. So we each have a guardian, um, energetic guardian, which um, is based on our birthday. So, you know, this may not mean anything to you if you don't know who your guardian is, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Just um, connect with Mother Earth and Father Sky. And if you do know who your guardian is, then um, just call in your guardian and just connect with your guardian. And then breathe in from the real eye. So real eye is, um, let me just get out of this first. The real eye is, it's different from the third eye. So third eye is around here in between your brow, but the real eye is kind of um, this notch. So between your eyes, when you just kind of, there is um, this, there's a knot here that is where your, um, within your skull, that's where the, the, the nose transition into your forehead. So it's kind of like a, a notch. That's where the real eye is. That's where the opening for the real eye is. So just tap this part of your face to kind of remind yourself that this is where you want to breathe in. So when you take energy in, you take in pure love, Take in the pure love through this part of your face. So the pure love would go into your body from here, go into your body, and then as you breathe out, it comes back out. Let it come back up through your crown area, top of your head, okay? So that's, do this breathing for a little bit. So breathe in from the real eye and exhale through the crown. That's what I mean by that. And then after that, once you actually feel that, you know, um, you are breathing in 
to the real eye and exhaling through your crown for, let's say, at least five, 10 breaths, then activate the zero point. Activate zero point. So zero point is um, sternum here, just one finger above the, the tip of your sternum. That's where the zero point is. Just say act zero point activate. And um, if you do this regularly, you would feel that your crown is activated. And then whirlpool activate. Whirlpool is your zero point, is where your the seat of your soul is. So from that zero point, from that area, is to imagine that it is <clears throat> spinning anti-clockwise. When it's spinning anti-clockwise fast enough, it will create this whirlpool effect. And this whirlpool is how you can um, release the energy that you don't want. Okay, so first you want to release, not mine. And then first past life, you activate it and then you release it and then go to the second past life, the past life, and then um, from current life as well. Okay, so that is the procedure for releasing the unprocessed negative emotions from your energy field. Questions? Comments? No? Three, three, nine, six. Six, six, nine, three. Well, what's that? Uh, that's meridians. How, what do we do? We repeat these two numbers? Or what do we do? Um, <clears throat> yeah, you just say these two. I forgot which is which. So there are two sets of energy. One flows one way and the other one flows different. Counter so, so Counter. what way? 3396 Good. goes from top to the root. Doing this, just say these numbers. Yeah, right? you, just, you, just, you just use these numbers, yeah. Three three nine oh, okay. six 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 nine three. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Roxana. Yeah. Thanks. I forgot which is which. I but I do know that yeah, those two sets. Yeah, from <clears> the <throat> head to the root and from the root. Also, thirty nine inch activate. What's that? So each, um, in our, from our body outwards, each inch is, has a different um, function for it. So 39 inch is fifth, is, um, fifth dimension energy, a, spec a specific um, fifth dimension energy that we have access to that gives us a protection. So that's what 39 inch is. What exactly we do? What, what, how to do it? You just say 39 inch activate. Okay. <laughs> okay. Sure. So what that means is you want to ex um, expand. Because usually our um, energy is, you know, very close to our body. Like when our uh, aura is very close to our body. So especially if you are in a um, in the city, like usually when we are in the rural areas, because there's nature around, our, our energy you know, very naturally expand. 
but most of the time our energy field is actually very close to our body. So you want to expand your energy to 39 inch so, so that you can have that extra layer of energy around you. Okay, so one of the ways that you can you can know when you actually get to 39 inch is you feel an expansion. So when you first run energy 33966693, your energy may be you know really small. And then the more the energy your your energy starts to run, you will feel that there is an expansion. And then 39, when you specifically mention 39 inch activate, you are telling your consciousness that you want to expand to 39 inches. So you would know you are actually there when you actually feel that expansion. So I, what I usually do is I have my you know, hands palm facing each other and I would just allow like when I start to increase my energy field I would actually feel that, the, that there is some energy that's pushing my palms further and further apart and it's natural we naturally would feel that so you just allow and wait for that energy to expand to about, you know, when your palms are about this, which is around 39 inches, then you know you're there. Sure. Yeah. Okay. So that's how you know you're there. Um, question here. Um, you said that your uh, guardian depends on your birth date. Uh, is there a place we can find out our guardian? Yeah, and um, I don't want to go into that right now, but I can send you a, um, a link that you can just go in to punch in your um, birthday and time, and it will give you, you know, or the readout. Manon, didn't I send you this uh, recently? The oh, I don't remember. It's called the Chiman. It's just a link I sent you. And oh. you have to put in your own birth, birth date and yeah. things. Okay. Like so for for tonight, if you yeah, that's okay. If you don't know it, never mind. All right, thank you. Just skip that. Any other questions? No? Okay. In that case, let's meditate.